Hey everyone, this is Emi Chicken. Welcome back to Team Pandori. So we went out and bought an MVSX. Available on both Amazon and AliExpress. These are fairly easy to come by. I've wanted one since they released, but the $499 RRP was a bit steep. Thank you, Amazon Sale. This house is a bar top unit with 50 classic games. Pretty sure this is the second wave of the MVSX unit. Let's open her up. There's a bit of tape on these tags, but we can get in fairly easy. This big white stuff protects the unit while it suffocates in a plastic bag. Mouth. Two. Mouth. Moving to the controls, the sticks feel quite light, similar somewhat to Sanwa, but with a bat end. The buttons, while concave, feel like Sanwa too, quite light with no noticeable click. In the box you also get a power adapter, as well as an instruction manual. With the marquee, this looks amazing. It's completely silent, and the menu loads up in under 10 seconds. From here, we can select the game we want to play. Unfortunately, there are no video snaps, only box art. Most of the classics are on here. King of Fighters, Metal Slug, Samurai Showdown, Fatal Fury, and a good few others. It's a shame that some of my favorite Neo Geo games are not present. Baseball Stars 2, Goal Goal Goal, Shock Troopers 2, and Neo Turf Masters. With a section here named Classic Collection V1, it looks as if they intended on selling additional packs. Bit of a poor move considering customers are paying top dollar for this bar top. It is quite a good mix of games, it just misses some of my personal favorites. This icon at the top opens the setting screen. We can choose our language, English, Japanese, Korean, etc. We can select either the arcade or console version of the game. In the game image section, we can select either pixels, scanline, painty filter, or a mix. At the bottom, we can update system or factory reset. Before we check out the display filters in action, let's check out the exterior. Drop dead gorgeous. There is a sheet of plastic that protects the extremely bright 4317 inch monitor and the lit marquee really does wonders for its very pleasing aesthetic. The cabinet is made of wood, which is good, bright red and brand new. It is pure eye candy. Let's start a game. Metal Slug X. The display is in the correct aspect ratio. We have nice pixels. There is a border at the very edge. Some people may be bothered by that. Control latency, pretty low. No screen tearing. Yeah, it's pretty good. Nice and sharp, like you are. Thank you. If we push the button in the middle, we can get to an option screen. Or we can save state, load state, change our controller settings, we can rebind them. Or we could change the video filters. What you just saw then was pixel scaling, but now let's try pixel scanline. We'll try another smooth scaling. Thank you. 
H scanning line. This is the smooth filter with the horizontal scan lines. And now V scanning line. This is the smooth filter with vertical scan lines. And finally, 40 degrees scanning line. This is the smooth filter with the scan lines at a 40 degree angle. After playing Metal Slug for a bit, it's apparent that there's something a bit off with the sticks. It's awkward to get the corners. The buttons are fine. I have no problem with these. I reckon it might be this bat thing. Time to play with my pink ball. Now it's still awkward to get that corner. It might be the restrictor gate that's being used, as I've had this issue before with circle gates. You can access the internals by taking off these little plastic things and then taking out the screws on both sides. There's only one ribbon connector that attaches the front panel to the cap. Spaghetti is me, Mario. The mounting plate of the joystick is a standard size. The wires from the MVSX are soldered to the switches. The joystick itself doesn't feel too bad. It's a Baolian, Sam clone, but this circle gate is horrible and we want it off. If we switch this for an octagonal or square, we will be able to hit the corners much easier. They probably designed the MVSX off the American style Neo Geo cabinet. Bat ends, circle restrictor gates. We're gonna switch in this Hex Cheapy from AliExpress. This should fit, but it doesn't. Let's make it fit. That is what she said. Seriously, she was gagging for it. Now we can get this on at least, with a little bit of damage. Little pieces of plastic fly off, but that's okay, I don't care. You can see how the octagonal gate guides the stick into the corners. The joystick on the right here is a Sanwa with a square gate. These are standard in Tekken cabinets and are better for Hadoukens. Octagonal gates will clunk into each corner, which is great for older titles. If you wanted to switch the joystick out completely, we'd suggest you get a Seimitsu LS40. You'll need to solder on these wires, then it'd feel much more like an authentic Japanese cabinet. Firmer and more precise than a Sanwa stick. The buttons are these screw-in types, and the wood is way too thick to fit in these sandwiches. If you find a switch with a similar size, you should be able to switch it out. Here's a sandwich sized Baolong. Baolong! A sandwa. And this one, it's either a Baoliang or an Uxel, I can't remember. I love how this clicks. Oh yeah. Now the sticks are working as they should, let's get to some gameplay. As we mentioned before, the screen looks lovely, and there is very little input latency. Plays very well. Whereas Metal Slug and Metal Slug X run fine, Metal Slug 2 has the same slowdown as the arcade original. As this uses emulation, we expected them to at least up the emulated core so we have no slowdown. Or at least to have an option to do so. Here's a game that I should actually get into. Samurai Showdown 5 Perfect. And if you want your Streets of Rage fill, there's some beat em ups too. Seems that there's a bit of something for everyone here.
Do you fancy Metal Slug from above? Shock Troopers. Next up, ma magic. Um, is a game. It's pretty difficult, but it's pretty cool because you can do this. I am um, fireman. fireman. I will breathe fire, fire on, on your, your face. face. Super Sidekicks Three. This franchise has its fans. And I've said it in the arcade a few times too. Pretty good game. No! Baseball stars. Garrow, Mark of the Wolves. This continues the story of Fatal Fury and is a great 1v1 fighting game. As the MVSX is missing a few of my favorite titles and we also want to push it to its fullest potential, we're going to use the Hilo X hack. We just need an 8 or 16 gigabyte flash drive, pop on the hack with the ROMs, go to this cog thing, and then go down to system update. Doing this will install the hack. And if you ever wanted to uninstall it, the process is very simple. Now, once the process is complete, we can select from either the MVSX or Hilo stick. Now, by doing this, we can add our own FBA or main ROMs, provided it's in the Hilo X list. And again, box art and no video snaps. Here's Baseball Stars 2. Plays great, but we're in Japanese. The Hilo Stick mod is very picky for the Neo Geo file, so it won't accept the UniBIOS. A bit of a shame. Here's Aero Fighters 3. A shooter like this in the stock games list would have done it wonders. And we can also add main classics that are non Neo Geo, such as Bubble Bubble. I know it might be weird to see Bubble Bubble on a Neo Geo cab, but it doesn't hurt to see how far we can push it. Yes, I do like pushing it. And Asterix. It feels like this is not running at 100%. Kind of like a slight frame skip. Simpsons arcade game runs fine. Moving on to the CPS2, we have Street Fighter Alpha 3. This runs pretty good. Also, Dan is better than Ryu. Here's the proof. Okay. 
CPS3 emulation clearly has issues. Is Street Fighter 3? Yes, it froze. So let's get to the pros and cons. First, it looks great. The screen feels larger than it is, and it is very bright. The pixels and scan lines look awesome. You can change the controls around. It's silent. You can modify the joysticks. And you can also add games with a hack. For the cons, it's expensive at RRP. While the sticks are actually quite decent, the circle restricted gate and the non-standard parts really let it down. As we're expected to pay 500 bucks for this, it's a shame to see that some really decent titles are missing. And Metal Slug 2 plays like arse. So, would we recommend this? Well, yeah. It is beautiful, and after a few tweaks, it'll play really well. If you wanted a bit more power under the hood, we'd have to switch out the box, but that's another video for another day. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and the subscribe, and then that bell thing to make it ding when we, when we ding. Lastly, a big thank you to all of the backers on our Patreon. All of the proceeds go straight back into this project, where we make these videos, as well as provide the Pandora tool, where we hack, fix, and then improve the Pandora box systems. Thank you for all of your support. All links are in video description, and if you have a comment, please throw it down below. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandory, and I hope you have a nice one. Ta-ra!